Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Plaster, Senior Executive Editor of Emergency Physicians Monthly, and this is EP Talk. EPs, uh, emergency physicians, where, uh, aka ER docs, uh, where, where ER docs can come and talk about things that are important to us. And uh, today, uh, my guest is Dr. Bryce Pulliam, and um, he and his colleagues in Oregon are attempting to start a union or join a union. And uh, I think this is a pretty interesting it's been tried. Uh, it's been talked about for literally decades. I've been around a long time, and um, we were talking about uh, unionization and uh, trying to get some power probably 30 years ago. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, hiccups in, in trying to do that. So, Bryce, first off, I want to congratulate you. It's an uphill battle. You know that. So uh, yes, tell, me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about yourself, okay, and about uh, uh, Providence Medford and the situation there and kind of what prompted you guys to think about uh, unionization. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm a board certified ER doc, been uh, practicing for about 10 years now uh, in Southern Oregon uh, in Medford. We uh, worked for Providence the whole time. Um, and as I think a lot of people have seen over the last 10 years, there's been huge changes in medicine, especially in emergency medicine. Yeah, you think? Um, yeah, really. So <laughs> what, what we've seen a lot is that, uh, you know, more power, more and more power has shifted away from the docs um, and shifted towards administration and, and corporate medicine. Right. Um, whether, you know, in our case, it's a huge multi-state provider of health care um, or it's somebody working for a CMG. Um, yeah. Those corporations have all the power. Um, and that's something that we've really struggled with lately at Providence um, and especially at Medford. Um, and so over the last, it's come up a couple of times over the last few years. Um, but in the last six months, really, my partners and I have have sat down and talked about what can we do to gain more power and, and unionizing kept coming up again and again. Okay. Um, and so we, let, we started let me, to look let me, into let me, it. Let me jump in and ask you, okay, tell me sure. a little bit about the structure of your group, because you, you you talked about uh, contract management groups, and and there obviously there's a lot of different ways that uh, emergency physicians uh, can interact with hospital administrations, either through their CMG, through their uh, you know um, their group or whatever. So tell me li a little bit about where you are personally in sure. your group and the the, uh, the the structure, if you will. So our group, uh, with one exception, uh, are uh, employees of the hospital. Um, uh, we're, we're W-2 employees. Um, okay. So we are employed directly by Providence. We, we are employees. We have one contractor who's been with the group for 20 some odd years. Um, but other than that, everyone is, is an employee of the hospital. And that, for us, gives us the, the ability to unionize. Okay. Um, if we were independent contractors, we couldn't be doing what we were doing. Okay. Okay. And, and now... You could unionize to work with or or to negotiate with your contract management group. Yes, no. That's a great yeah. question. Um, if you are a W two employee of a, a contract management group, I suppose. Uh, I, yeah. Personally, I've never worked for a contract management group, and they're set up, you know, different ways how employees are are technically employed, right. whether as independent contractors or as employees of the larger group. Um, all, all I can speak to is our group. We were directly employed by the hospital. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And, uh, and so, um, okay. So what was the, we all have issues. Sure. <laughs> Anybody who's yeah. been in emergency medicine, you know, uh, it's, sometimes it's pay, sometimes it's uh, staff support. I mean, I've been in uh, situations where uh, the, the waiting room was full, but the, but the ER was only half full because because they didn't give us the nurses to quote staff the emergency department sure. and so we only had half of the beds staffable or staffed and consequently you know we're back there flying through the patients and then you get to the end of the the ones in the in the in the rack and you can't you can't go anywhere because they're all out in the waiting room and then you you have the administrators telling you you should go out to the waiting room and see them <laughs> yes and i'm going I don't think that's a good idea, you know. Uh, you, uh, triage, uh, your you know, per, in private discussions in front of patients and and uh, other patients and things like that. And yet, and yet, what do you do when you don't have adequate staffing? So that that's an yeah. issue. And I and I've had other you know just simple pay issues. So what was the thing that kind of pushed you guys over the 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 brink, if you will? Sure. Um, you know, it, unions exist for a lot of different reasons. 
Um, sometimes it's for employee safety. If you're working in a, a, a mill or something, yep. um, sometimes it's for pay. Um, in our case, really the big push um, had nothing to do with either of those. It had to do with patient safety. Um, and for us, the, the, a couple of the big issues that we've run into lately um, is that again and again, um, sort of in direct opposition to statements made by both ASEP and AEM, we've been asked to uh, uh, care for patients outside of the ER, take on expanded roles outside of the ER, um, being and procedurists. Leave, or, and leave the ER. Yes, and, and especially at night when we are single covered. Um, so <laughs> that's old school, uh, buddy. That is old yes. school. That, that nobody does that anymore. Yeah, and that's that's you know that was one of the major issues that has come up again and again. And luckily, it hasn't been implemented yet, but we see it coming down the road, and we want to get ahead of it. Yeah. Um, and and the other issue is services being discontinued, uh, support services being discontinued, um, oftentimes with little or no notice. Um, and no attempt to collaborate as far as how are we going to bridge this gap? Um, right. You know, emails going out on Friday afternoon saying Monday at midnight, we're losing service X, um, you know, <laughs> imaging service X. Yeah. So um, without going into too much detail, you know, we want to use the power of a union to it, it buffer ourselves against some of those issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so you said uh, you were in a staff meeting and somebody said, you know, why don't we unionize? Okay, so what's the next step? I I, I see sure. from reading the the Becker's uh, article about it, but uh, where did you go to and and how do you? Because obviously you what there's twelve of you, right? Right now in the group there. So this is it's sort of a, a moving target for how many of us are, are going to be included in the union. Uh, historically, unions have been, physician unions have been just doctors. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, just this week, we're hearing from Providence that they like us. We have uh, five or five to six mid-levels who work in the ER as well, staffing fast track, et cetera. Right. Um, and they've been asked to be included in our, our uh, bargaining group. Um, okay. So it looks like we're going to expand and include them as well. Um, you know, our group thinks the more support we have, the better. Yeah. Um, but the, the process to, to get back to your question, okay. um, you know, is if, if you're interested in joining a union, um, one, we did a lot of reading. We talked to lawyers. We did a lot of reading, did a lot of homework. Um, and to start the process, one, we reached out to a union who's actually represented other physicians in Oregon, um, the American Federation of Teachers. Um, again, they have uh, the largest physician presence in Oregon. Um, so that's, that's where we went to, um, and reaching out to them, the process is actually pretty simple and it's laid out pretty uh, clearly, um, in that you get a number of physicians in your group. Um, technically I believe the number is 30%, but most unions want it to be closer to 75% of physicians in your group willing to say, I want to join a union. I'm interested in pursuing this. Right. Um, and then you file with the national labor relations board. Um, and it's a petition to you petition them to say, we'd like to start the process of joining a union. That brings the hospital in and starts a federally um, uh, spelled out process, um, whereby right now we're at the stage where Providence is meeting with the union and trying to hash out details and see if they can come to an agreement on who's going to join the union and how the election will happen. Um, and then if they can agree to that, it looks like probably by the end of next month, we'll be having a formal election. Wow, that's um, again, pretty fast. Oh, yeah, no, we've flown through this process in large yeah. part because we have uh, almost unanimous support for the union um, from from our group and, and from our mid levels as well. Um, what's so the what's like, the position right now? Uh, I mean, what's the feel or what's the feedback that you get from? Uh, I was reading the in the Becker's report they were talking about uh, transparency with the staff and yada yada yada. Um, do you get the feel that uh, they're trying to? Uh, uh, they're, they're supportive, uh, uh, equivocal or, or antagonistic. Where, where do you, where do you think you are with this? Certainly not antagonistic. Um, I think if, if you were to pull them, they would, you know, them being administration at large, uh, whether yeah, it's local Providence or capital P Providence, uh, you know, multi-state Providence, they would prefer we're not in a union, uh, because that gives us more power. Um, yep. How that's been demonstrated recently and what I think the power of a union speaks to is that 
we've we've never been invited to a sit down meeting with administration to discuss our concerns and to uh, have have face to face interactions with them um, to really bring up the issues in front of us. And I can tell you, in the last two weeks, I've been invited to no less than five meetings uh, with administration. <laughs> You've got uh, their attention, huh? <laughs> we have their attention. They, yep. and, and again, it speaks to the power of the union. But as soon as we said the the, the U word, uh, they were in the department. They wanted to talk to us face to face. They wanted to Skype with us. They wanted to text us. They wanted to talk to us. Right. Um, and presumably, I think some of that is to build rapport um, or try to sure. rebuild rapport okay. um, and and make the case that the, we're better off without a union. Right. Right. Do they do they perceive it to be a staffing issue or do they perceive it to be uh, a kind of a hidden money issue? No. Hard to know at this point because Providence yeah. hasn't really taken a, an official position other than, you know, the party line of we support our physicians doing their federally protected actions. <laughs> um, you know, that that feels pretty uh, boilerplate, boilerplate, excuse me. Um, I think we've been very clear that this is a transparency issue and this is a communication issue and this is a patient safety issue. So yeah. I, I don't yeah. know how they can right. conceive it to be anything else. We won't. Well, this may be getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to ask you, sure. um, obviously, with Providence being a multi-state, multi-hospital uh, um, corporation, uh, probably a nonprofit, is it not? Correct. Yeah, it's nonprofit. So uh, uh, I would think that uh, you might eventually be in contact with other emergency physicians at other Providence hospitals, because they're probably all staffed to, are very similar to what you are. Uh, does, do you know? You know, I think many of them are, but again, Providence being as large as it is and, you know, having over the years usurped other healthcare systems, I'm sure there's a variety of staffing models uh, for yeah. the ERs. Um, I, I can speak to Providence Portland. I know their employees uh, or my understanding yeah. Um, is that they're employees of, of Providence. So there are other groups that are directly employed by the hospital that would be union eligible. Yeah. Now, okay. Now, I, uh, you said that they were part of the uh, National T Oregon Teachers Union. Oh, but but actually in the in Becker's, they were talking about being affiliated with, in some way, the Oregon Nurses Association, or Oregon Nurses Union. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's been sort of a learning uh, curve for all of us is that, you know, unions at large are, um, most of them sort of filter up to the top to, you know, one of a couple of large unions, the AFL-CIO, uh, right. et cetera, is at the very top. And then it's sort of a, a pyramid of smaller unions and smaller branches as you go on down. Yeah. Um, the AFT and the, the American Federation of Teachers and the Oregon Nurses Association are affiliated organizations. And so, you know, it's sort of inter interchangeable um, for, for our practical purposes. Yeah. Um, the, the larger organization is the AFT, but directly it's the, uh, the Oregon Nurses Association. Um, mm -hmm. And again, they share staff, they share resources. Um, so we're sort of under, under that larger umbrella of both. Right. Now, let's get down into the nitty gritty of what unionization sure. looks like when you're negotiating, okay? Uh, because it is it is a little bit like uh, forming you know countries forming alliances uh, and saying if uh, uh, if the teachers uh, are not getting what they want uh, the, the doctors are going to support them is there uh, do you understand that to be the same thing the nurses the doctors nurses and teachers uh, would be sort of uh, lined up in support of one another yeah I mean I, I think. The, the power of unions is the power of numbers in that, yeah, um, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I'm going to support other other union members. I think more directly, uh, again, even though the, the larger organization is the American Federation of Teachers, what we see um, is, is that largely healthcare supports healthcare. Um, you know, right. we see uh, nurses up in Portland are working on a contract now um, and are voicing their support for us and for other Providence employees who are, who are working to unionize right now that may delay their contract going through um, out of solidarity with us trying to get our union bids through. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, that, that is one of the uh, prices of being in the union uh, is that you're expected to support other unions. Uh, and that does give you a lot more uh, power to bargain uh, right. with, with these large organizations. And, and let's segue into power. You know, uh, the, the truth is that uh, unions really only have power if they have the ability to, 
to have work stoppages, AKA strikes. Uh, we know that emergency physicians um, could not strike uh, if, uh, you know, um, no, we wouldn't strike, but uh, we also couldn't strike. It's kind of a, a yin and yang sure. thing. Okay. What, how is it that you actually can uh, exert power? If you go to the administration and say, we need X and they say, forget it, and, you know, pound sand. Um, um, and we're going to do what? <laughs> sure. Um, so uh, a couple of options, you know, strike, uh, striking, uh, as, as one lawyer explained it to me, is uh, uh, defined legally as employment warfare. Um, so that's the, the last option that anyone wants to get to. Providence doesn't ever want to get there. We don't ever want to get there, whether it's us, the nurses or, or whomever. Yeah. Um, strikes are always the last option. Um, so there are lots of other options uh, before you even get there. One being you know, leveraging support for other from other unions. We're we're not going to sign our contract unless you're willing to support the what yep. you know, the nurses are asking for, what this other physician group is asking for. Um, that that's obviously the the first step. Um, between that and a strike would be if we can't come to an agreement, arbitration is always an option. Yep. Um, and, and again, that's legally spelled out where if both sides just can't come to an agreement, a third party gets to arbitrate whether whether what one side or the other is asking for is reasonable and come to a, a an arbitrated agreement. And, and that's a yes. binding arbitration. But with, with, that is a parties, binding arbitration. Binding arbitration yes. between the parties, whether they want to go by it or not. Correct. I mean, it's uh, yes, they're, they're so, stuck with it. Yes. And, and we're stuck with it, too. Both sides stand to gain and both sides stand to lose in that one. So, uh, again, not something that, that we want to get to or would ever want to get to. Um, physician strikes. No, it doesn't look like a, uh, you know, a teacher strike or a even a nurse's strike um, where they can walk out. Um, physicians aren't going to walk out. We can't walk out. Uh, we can't yeah. abandon our patients. It wouldn't. Um, but but, you know, this is something that's been discussed you know, many times and it looks different ways for different physicians. Um, for surgeons, sometimes it'll look like we're not going to do elective cases. We're going to do emergent yep. cases only, um, right. but we're not going to do elective cases. Um, for other physicians, it's we're going to see our patients, we're going to write our charts, but we can't sign them until we've come to an agreement. Um, <laughs> so you can't you can't bill for my work. I've documented what I've done, but you can't bill for my work until we've come to an agreement. Um, and I don't know, Providence may very well not pay us while we're seeing patients and not signing <laughs> charts. Um, but we're not, we're not going to walk out on our patients. We will always right. be there for our patients. Um, and, so, and, and again, that's part of what got us into this is that we, we want to do what's right by our, by our patients, right. And we will continue to do what's right by our patients, whether that, you know, is a strike, um, where we're still seeing them and doing all the right things, um, but not getting paid for it. And I'm willing to do that too, if that's what it came down to. Got it. Got it. That, 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 that makes total sense, you know, because see the patient's do the charts, just don't allow anybody to make any money off because you wouldn't be making any money off of being in, in, in a strike anyway, right? And and no. just so it's just kind of mutually assured destruction to say, hey, if we go out, you know, uh and and stop billing, you're gonna stop making and we're gonna stop getting paid and we're gonna have to have to argue this out. But the patient's not gonna be in the middle. We're not gonna yes. not gonna put the patient in the middle. That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Um, are, are uh, obviously if your physicians uh, are or emergency physicians are uh, employees, do you have uh, house staff? Uh, you have house physicians, uh, radiologists, and uh, pathologists, and 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 others that uh, uh, would be likely to be uh, coming into that. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, uh, again, this is this is part of the, uh, the the nuance of working for such a large organization. Um, what we found at Providence is, uh, you know, we're actually the, the ER physicians um, are employed by a different branch of the larger Providence organization than our hospitalists, um, which which is why, again, we felt that we had grounds to unionize by ourselves um, without including the hospitalists. And we're not even sure if legally the hospitalists would be allowed to join us initially um, okay. because they're they're employed by different subsidiaries of Providence. Um, but they are still directly empo employed by the larger Providence organization. So, you know, we would be thrilled um, if, if they wanted to join us. Um, you know, our some of our pulmonologists are employees as well. Um, yeah. and the more the merrier from where I sit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that it's a movement that we've seen uh, uh, nationwide uh, of more and more physicians are being employed by somebody. They're either employed by large uh, uh, multi-specialty groups uh, or hospitals and, and who then somehow form their own me uh, me 
multi-specialty group. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's interesting um, because it does apply to a lot more people. We kind of think of ourselves, you know, we're sort of isolated in the emergency part. We don't sure. oftentimes don't make it up to, the, not, in your case, maybe you do, but uh, certainly in, in my career, I very seldom even knew what the inside of the, the wards looked like. Uh, didn't go to the cafeteria. I came in and worked and 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 uh, and took care of things. Um, are there other? You mentioned that there are other physicians, emergency physicians, who have unionized before. Uh, have Have you spoken with any of them? There. So, to my knowledge, we we are the first, if not one of the first, groups of emergency physicians unionizing as as a block. Um, in Oregon, there are other, there's a hospitalist group uh, out of uh, Peace Health up uh, in Eugene and Springfield. Uh, and they unionized actually back in 2014 or 2015. So they've been around for, for quite some time. Um, and uh, their group has actually really sort of flourished um, under the union. Um, and so that that gave us some, some indication that this might be possible. Um, okay. Again, hard to know for emergency physicians. Yeah. Um, there may be a few that are lumped into larger groups. Um, certainly there are resident emergency physicians who are lumped in right. um, with larger resident unions, but uh, we knew this was possible um, and seeing what had been done uh, up at, up at Peace Health years yeah. ago. And we're seeing uh, out, out of uh, the Bend area, um, Bend, Oregon, uh, St. Charles is also doing a union bid and they're a huge group um, of, I believe, two or 300 docs, um, basically all the docs in their healthcare organization wow. um, are, are in the midst of a union bid. And I believe their uh, union vote just got approved or is getting approved um, in the next couple of weeks. So um, this, this is a sort of a growing groundswell um, that's been around for a while in Oregon, but I, I expect we're going to see sort of a tsunami of, of union bids as people see that this is possible. Sure. Um, and and hopefully see the benefits that can come from it. Uh, we're near the near the end of our time here. I want to ask you one more thing, uh, and sure. that is that uh, have you been approached? Uh, obviously, you were in Becker's, which is especially uh, in medically focused uh, um, press. But have you been uh, in, approached by the local press? Uh, do you have any idea how they might view this? Are, how are, the, are you going to get tarred and feathered in front of the public or are you going to be have the high ground? Have you have you do you have a plan for that? Yeah. So um, we we've been approached by the local press um, in so much as when we applied with the NLRB, uh, we, we set out a, a press release um, okay. and have had some some time to do interviews with the press um, here locally um and basically state our case as to why this is important and why patients will benefit from this you know this this isn't about us this is about our patients yeah. um and, and so fair so far i feel like the local press has been fair um again sort of the only thing that providence has said publicly um is that that they support our, our federally protected rights um yeah. we'll see if that tune changes as we <laughs> get 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 to vote and get approved as a union as i'm sure we will um, yeah. And then get to our first uh, negotiating our first union contract, um, yeah. because that's that's where things have potential to get ugly. Um, but again, this isn't about compensation. Sure, con contracts include compensation. This is about patient care and really making sure that we're available in the emergency department to care for our patients and have the resources to do that. Yeah, I think you're a good. Are you the spokesman for the for this? I, your name is uh, is put out there. I, I hope so because uh, you seem to be a, have a good handle on the on the issues and stay on message with this. So I, I think that's the one thing that could, uh, if uh, a hospital could essentially say doctors want more money, you know, and uh, could uh, tar you with that kind of uh, bad press. And I think you're really Absolutely. wise. You're wise to stay on message, and you know, in, in essence, get the the community behind you to say that everybody knows there's too long a wait. So uh, there's all kinds of issues of of getting services, and and that as a physician, you're speaking for them, and you're trying to help the hospital to uh, see that these things. Uh, what do we need to do uh, to make them work? Let's let's do them and make them work and work together and. And uh, well, keep and their keep their eyes on the ball. 
And I think that the hospital's not wrong that this union bid is probably going to cost them more money. Um, and why I say that is not that that we stand to make more money out of this. You know, we'll negotiate our contract like we've always negotiated our contract, but it's going to cost them more money in that we need better staffing. Um, yep. We need better staffing in other departments. So we're not having to cross cover. We need better support staffing. So they're going to have to hire more people. Um, and yep. that's where it's going to cost them more money. Are, are they just uh, the larger picture? Are they caught between the rock and a hard place as far as uh, declining? Uh, it, let me just ask you this. You may not know and it's, it's okay. And, and certainly don't want you to to malign your employer, but uh, is this a matter of outside forces uh, squeezing Providence or is this something that Providence could do if they, you know, had a better business model or, uh, uh, you know, employed, uh, um, well, just better business model. Uh, is this inside the Providence issue or is this, uh, is Providence responding uh, to uh, statewide or even um, national pressure? Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, again, I, I'm not going to speak ill of Providence. I do think this is a larger national issue um, yeah. that staffing staffing is a challenge nationwide. Um, yeah. And what what I think has been frustrating to me is to, to see administration throw up their hands and say, well, this is a nationwide issue, so we can't fix it. Right. Um, and, you know, if, if cars were catching fire and Ford just said, you know what, Chevys are catching on fire too. We can't fix it. Um, <laughs> somebody's going to, somebody's going to have to think outside yeah. the box and figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. Um, and I suspect whoever makes it work first and, you know, has employees that feel like they're supported yeah. um, and feels like they have the resources to provide the care that we went into medicine to provide, they're going to attract other employees um, and find that it's easier to staff um, when people feel like they're supported and can provide the care that they need to provide. Again, does it cost money to hire people? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But hiring permanent staff costs a lot less than hiring travelers. Um, and, yeah. it, you know, hires and, and having staff retention costs a lot less than having to continually onboard to make up for the people you're losing. So, um, yes, it's a nationwide issue. Um, Providence, you know, being one of the largest providers of healthcare in the U.S., I think is uniquely positioned to have its foot um, or have, have an, enough reserves to feel like they can challenge this head on. Um, yeah. I think it's going to take a willingness on their part to really step yeah. up and think, think outside the box as to how can we make this an organization that one, does the right thing by their patients and two, does the right thing by their employees so we can retain employees and provide the best possible care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that uh, you you say stated very very well. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, but I want to uh, address our uh, viewers. Uh, and uh, if you're in a hospital right now in which you're an employee uh, or an employee of a or a a, a W two employee of a group, you have the ability, as uh, Dr. Pulliam has indicated, that you have the ability to consider this. And uh, this is something you need to keep your eye on. Um, Providence is a huge group, uh, a, a huge hospital group, and we're going to see uh, where uh, where this little uh, uh, where this little fire goes to. Uh, and I think that uh, we, as emergency physicians, if I could make the final word here, we as emergency physicians are the front door to all of medicine in many, many cases. People come to the emergency department to find out what's wrong. We, we diagnose and triage, diagnose and treat. Uh, and, um, and so I think that we're gonna find that we are critical. Uh, if you don't already know that, we're critical to the, the, to the smooth functioning of the healthcare system in the United States. And it's imperative, as, as Bryce has said, it's imperative that we have the adequate staffing to address those things. And um, I, I think that uh, uh, we've talked about it for, for 30 years, literally 30 plus years uh, about unionization, but we've always been too small, too segmented, uh, too isolated. Uh, but the time has come where our, our groups are much, much, much larger and and the idea of coming together and negotiating for the things that are best for our patients and for ourselves uh, is is probably here. So uh, I hope you'll keep your eye on what happens at uh, uh, Providence Medford and, uh, and and Dr. Bryce Pulliam and the group out there. And if it applies to you, 
maybe you should think about uh, uh, learning more about unionization. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, this is EP Talk, and I'm Dr. Mark Plaster, and um, catch you next time. Bye.